Hello, my name is Ken, and this is part three of Let's Code MUD in C++11. Uh, in part two, we talked about lambdas uh, and built out our server to uh, be able to accept connections and also to be able to cleanly shut down. Um, in this episode, I wanted to add some more connection logic, but before we do that, I, I wanted to point out that in the last episode, uh, I kind of pulled a fast one on you guys. And I don't know if any of the, the particularly astute C++98 guys out there uh, watching this video went, Ho hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't do that. Um, I did something that is vi uh, flagrantly illegal in C++98, which is that I copied a non-copyable type. Um, see here, I said sockets were non-copyable, uh, and then I declared a temporary of that socket type, and I went ahead and copied it into a vector. Uh, when I did pushback, it's going to institute the, uh, it's going to call the, the copy constructor. Uh, and in C++ 98, that's, that's, um, that's a no-no. That's uh, copying and non-copyable. Well, that's what non-copyable means. It can't, it means you can't do it. <laughs> uh, the copy constructor does not exist. Uh, or is private, um, or, or is uh, undefined. Anyway, um, so you might ask, what's going on here? Why did, the, why did this compile? Um, is this a compiler optimization? Uh, no, no it's not. Uh, and in fact, I can show you, if you did a uh, socket type, uh, let's say, let's call this new socket, gotta give it a different name than socket. If I said uh, socket type new socket MIO service, uh, and then I, I went ahead and I tried to do new socket here. I tried to compile this. Um, yeah, I would get a complaint from the compiler. It would tell me that I tried to use a deleted function. I tried to use socket, uh, the constructor that requires const socket ampersand. I tried to use the, cons the, the copy constructor, uh, easy for me to say, and that's deleted. Uh, this is a non-copyable object. Well, Shoot, why was it legal before? Was I was I not using the copy constructor? In fact, I was not using the copy constructor. And that brings us to the topic of today's val uh, today's video, which is R values. Um, so to talk about um, R values, let's let's what is an R value? Well, what's an L value? This this is actually a concept uh, that goes all the way back to C plus plus ninety eight L values and R values, um, and it comes from assignment statements. It comes from seeing that in every assignment statement, there's um, something on the left-hand side and something that's on the right-hand side. And the things that are on the right-hand side are not necessarily the same set of objects that are legal to put on the left-hand side of an assignment operation. For example, I can't say, I can't say uh, 2 plus 2 assign 4 to that. That's, that's illegal. Uh, an expression is not a valid L value. An expression is a valid R value. Or similarly, I could say, um, you know, get some random number, uh, and I can't assign four to the result of that that random number calculation, that random number function. Um, uh, the return value, uh, a value type that's returned from a function, is an R value. Um, so C plus plus ninety eight had this distinction. They had the the concept of what is legal to put on the left hand side of an assignment operator, and what's legal to put on the right hand side of an assignment operator. Um, C++11 takes this many steps farther, um, which is to say that we, we actually can have now functions that um, react differently when you're passed an L value versus when you're passed an R value. Uh, and case in point is this pushback function. Uh, this pushback to, to add a new element to, to the vector uh, knows somehow whether this argument is an L value um, and, and has to be copied, or whether it's an R value and can be moved instead of copied. Uh, how does it know that? What tools does C++11 give us to be able to distinguish between L values and R values? Well, C++ has always had a concept of function overloading, where I can have the same function with different names, uh, but because of the arguments, a uh, different version of that function is called. So in other words, I, I could have a, you know, a do something a foo function, uh, that takes an int, uh, or I could have a, a foo function that takes a float. Um, this is a very basic example of overloading. is uh, same name, but when called with different arguments, a different version of the function gets called. Well, we have the same thing now in C++11 for L values and R values. Uh, so previously, 
uh, you could you could always call um, some function with um, let's say well let's use socket type you could always say when some socket comes in you know do some stuff with that socket uh, and this would this would successfully bind to an L value uh, you could always take the reference of an L value but not necessarily to an R value. Now I don't know if C++ 98 this would try to work and just give you seg faults all the time, uh, but uh, either way it's only a good idea to do this with L values. Uh, and in C++ 11 this will only bind to L values. Now um, you can see this is a non-const reference. What, what happens when you do a const reference? Well a const reference will bind to anything. A const reference uh, will, will bind to an L value. If I called, if I called foo um, on, on new socket, um, this this is going to it's going to bind to the first one because it, it's not const, so it's going to try to bind to the most permissive one. Um, but if this were a const socket, then it would bind to the second one, right? That's that's how L values work. This is this is C plus plus ninety eight material. This is nothing new. But what's new comes in is when I try uh, to use an R value. So the, the result of an expression or the result of a function, um, when I try to do that and I call foo, this is actually going to go ahead and work. This is going to let me call the second version of this function, this const reference uh, version. Uh, and the reason it's going to work is because uh, an R value, um, it, it's 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 all right to to look at an R value. It's it's the compiler is going to say, if if you have some temporary floating out there, sure you can see the contents of that temporary. That's not a problem. Now modifying the results of the temporary that is going to be a problem because no one's ever going to see it again. That's a logical error. Um, but yeah, so this will work. Now um, there's one one extra thing C plus plus eleven puts in here, which is that we have the ability to distinguish between a const L value, uh, let's add new socket, MIO service, the, the, a const L value and an R value. Now, normally these would both bind to the second version, they would call the second version of foo, but what if, what if I only wanted um, the R value for uh, to I wanted a, a version of foo that only the R value would uh, would call, uh, and this is this is going to be the case of um, copy constructors versus move constructors. Copy constructors, in fact, forget this first version. Copy constructors only want to take uh, a const L value, some some object out there that we have to preserve, whereas a move constructor is free to dismantle the old object. Uh, and, and the way we're going to be able to tell the difference between the two is the double ampersand here. Uh, so uh, you might have seen this before uh, if, if you were looking into, hey, what is C++11? This is the, the double ampersand, and this, this is called a reference to an R value or, or an R value reference. This is a function that can only be called uh, by an R value. So if I tried to do foo on, on new socket, I would call the first one, if I tried to call foo on socket type, it's going to call the second one. Um, because even though an R value is legal to pass into either one of these, um, it's going to prefer uh, to call into the one that's specifically an R value reference. And that's that's how we get uh, copy constructors versus move constructors. Um, so uh, why did this come about? Just some, some history. Uh, the C++ standard library has a lot of collection types. They have uh, vectors, lists, etc. And these are very painful to copy, but they're trivially easy to move because most of these are backed by um, uh, dynamic allocation. They're backed by a pointer to an array out there somewhere or a pointer to a linked list or something like that. Um, and so moving is just a matter of, of copying a pointer uh, or swapping a pointer. Uh, whereas copying, you have to make a deep copy of that whole object so that when the first one's destroyed, the second one stays valid. Um, sockets, likewise, are an object where you can't copy them because if you closed the socket when the first one's destroyed, the second one would have to stay valid. Um, but you can move it so that when the first one's destroyed, nothing happens. 
um, you, you invalidate the first one. Um, so anyway, that's that's um, that's L value references versus R value references. Let's look at what that would look like um, as a constructor. Uh, let's let's create let's start creating a connection class that's going to wrap this socket object here. Um, let's create source uh, server connection.hpp and do our include card and if namespace namespace server the connection class will be in the server component class connection Okay, so um, it's going to have that socket type. It's going to encapsulate a socket, and we're going to have the uh, ordinary uh, connection, which takes an IO service um, boost. So IO service, and we're going to use it to construct a socket. Okay, that's that's a good uh, one parameter constructor. And notice that like all one parameter constructors, you should declare it explicit because otherwise it, it could become uh, an implicit conversion operator. Uh, and you don't want that unless you do want that. Um, but uh, by default, you should be doing explicit. Okay. Um, okay. So what would a copy constructor for this be? Well, first of all, What's what? Remember the rule of zero uh, in C plus plus ninety eight. The rule of zero is if you can avoid declaring the copy constructor, the copy assignment operator, or the destructor, you should avoid declaring all three, and let memberwise copying and memberwise destruction, uh, that's generated by default by the compiler. Let that be what happens. Uh, and in this case, that's actually correct. Uh, in this case. The connection contains the just a socket, and so um, because the socket's non-copyable, by default the connection's going to be non-copyable. It's going to try the compiler's going to try to create an implicit uh, copy constructor, but it's not going to be able to because um, it's not going to be able to memberwise construct uh, the the socket. Um, so that's fine. If if we were to try to declare one, uh, what would that look like? It would be const connection. Um, and that's a copy constructor. Okay. And uh, likewise, um, this is what the assignment operator looks like. So copy assignment operator. Okay. Well, what does uh, the move constructor look like? Well, we saw what it takes to bind to an R value reference. So a move constructor is just doing that. A move constructor is this. And a move assignment operator is this. And yes, I do mean that one ampersand at the front because an assignment operator still returns an L value. Even if one of its arguments wasn't an L value, um, it's still going to return an L value. All right. All right. Um, so these are what these would look like. Um, now, in practice, how often do you have to define uh, something uh, with a double ampersand operator? Well, we're going to see over the course of the project, but it's actually going to be very rarely. You, if, the def if the default compiler-generated version works, then that's the one you want. Uh, there is one case in which the compiler-generated version is not going to work, uh, which is that if you ever declare the destructor or uh, either of the copy operations, the compiler is actually going to choose not to to create your move constructor for you. But if you still want the default one, if you still want the compiler to create it, just do equal default. That easy. Okay. Uh, we, we want neither of these. Uh, we want the, the default uh, behavior, but um, that is that is pretty much R values and R value references and move constructors in a nutshell. Uh, so we're gonna come back and we're, we're gonna do that connection logic in our next video. Uh, so stick with me. Uh, my name was Ken, and this was uh, Let's Code a MUD in C++11. All right, thank you.